a music lendi release is not music that I just release for the sake of releasing it. It's music that I wanted to hear. I want to hear. I wanted to hear five, six years ago during that time when I was discouraged that young internet layers look. I wanted to hear that. Yes. And when every time people ask me, what were you thinking, Galangom? I say, I needed to hear that because I almost didn't make it. Uh, it, it's not often that actually okay yeah it, it was early last year so i just say it's not often that i have a dj on the show okay um dj's don't want to talk and you'll tell me as the conversation goes on as yeah. to why they just want to be known for the arts and the music yeah and not necessarily their private lives and things that go on to their it go on in their <laughs> private lives but i think that's a bit unfair because to become who we are, there's a story. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be always be a crazy story that is about gossip and all of that. But there's a story that structures who we are. Yeah. Um, sometimes people knowing our formative story makes them understand why we have the glory. Yeah. Because we can't, we just didn't come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you are Seabulela. Yes. Tole, yes. Which means we are grateful or yeah. we are thankful. Yeah. Um, it speaks, you've got a name that encapsulates appreciation would you mm. say it's why you've taken your career where it is right now especially with the lyrics and the music um i i think it starts there i think it's mm -hmm. the foundation and and we we often take for granted okay. you know and and shout out to my parents you know my my mom and my dad for for really and and i get where the name comes from mm -hmm. because i've got three older sisters okay. and i'm the only boy mm -hmm. in the family and you want to go to be bezama because <laughs> if you look at the gap <laughs> in my <laughs> yeah, um, my my elder sister is 14 years older than me and then it's 11 years and then it's eight years then goes i mean you know <laughs> so yeah, well, they've been praying and sure. been you know wanting to have uh, a baby boy and it just made sense for them to to be grateful and 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 i i encapsulate that name so much um in everything that i do you know um i'm so grateful for where my career is and 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 you're right that 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 in its sense is the foundation of the music, mm -hmm. uh, the foundation of the radio, the foundation of the TV, the funda foundation of being a DJ as well. And every single day before I sleep, when I pray, I really am grateful. I live to okay. say thank you. Thank you for the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this. Thank you for this blessing. You know, I don't take it for granted. I mean, even on my radio show, um, there's a Usa moment that I do. And it's just to be grateful for the day and, yeah, and yeah, being grateful yeah. to make it because yeah. we 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 go through so many challenges in a day uh, in a day yeah, yeah in a day yeah uh, when you wake up someone else didn't wake up when you sleep someone else didn't sleep they woke up but they didn't sleep sure um, when you go to work someone else is not going to work hmm. you know and when you think about it from that perspective um, just say thank you just be grateful. You know, just appreciate the fact that you are where you are. And yes, we're always hopeful for more. We're always hopeful for for bigger and better. Sure. But do we often take a moment outside of the material things that we have, outside of the talents that we have, just to say, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. being alive? I'll bring it back to to the music um, and, and the journey and why... It is as such a good place it is right now. Mm. Um, I, I would say you, for the lack of a better word, you're at a peak, but you haven't reached the destination. Sure. Right? Yeah. So you're peaking in terms of 
looking back at where you've been before, mm. but the journey is still going on. So yeah. the mountain is still being climbed. Mm. Um, at the beginning of the mountain, there had to be someone who opened the door for you. Mm. Um, and many of us, when we look at the things that have happened in our lives that are good, especially, or the breakthrough moments, do you remember who's that person who opened the door for you? Um, and maybe take an opportunity to thank them. Yeah. Um, there's been so many. Um, but in each and every craft that okay. I'm fortunate to to operate to be in. able to operate in and yeah. to to able to be able to express, um, in in radio, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Herben mm -hmm. who gave me an opportunity at Golf CFM. Okay. Um, in 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 also in radio, Mutewa FM, Sheikh Kumalo gave me an opportunity at Mutewa FM, a community radio station. And then I came to YFM, where Dumelo took me in from Bloemfontein, yeah. you know, um, coming into Gauteng and gave me that opportunity, even though I was a little bit older from what they usually take in as sure. talent at the sure. time. Sure. Because they, he was so big on grooming. Yeah you know, talent. And I remember that conversation is like, you are, you are a little bit too old yeah. for, for why, for why, <laughs> you know, cause I was 23 years old. You get it. Like wow. you, you, usually, <laughs> um, they'll take someone who's 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, because moving from campus to commercial, two different things. It's a transition. It takes time. It takes a lot of understanding on how you communicate, how you talk, how you express the craft in its entirety. Right. Uh, so I'm I'm very grateful from that perspective, from a radio perspective, to Melo, who guided me, who also, and I think a lot of people don't know this, when I got to Johannesburg, by the way, it's my first time on a podcast. Yes. I was not to online. Again, was links. No cuts as well. No cuts as well. You know, so... Um, I got here and I was uh, DJ C, yeah. S I Y A from okay. from Bloemfontein oh, CFM. <laughs> so generally, you know, my full stage name, you, yeah. you think S I Y A. Why not call yourself a C, man, yeah, You know. Yeah. And I remember, I would I would say successful, independent, young, and ambitious. Come on, that, that was me. <laughs> I get here and he's like, no, bro, this thing's not gonna work. There's so many DJ Cers. Yeah, yeah. Generally. And, and he had a vision mm -hmm. for you, for me. And yeah. I didn't realize it yeah. at the time yeah. to say it starts again with the name. Mm -hmm. So when I look at my path um, from my mom and my dad naming me Usia Bulela to Dumelo changing and saying, I need to relook my stage name mm -hmm. and come up with something unique, which is now Sapta. I then realized that I am, am living in my purpose mm. because... You can Google now, Kauti Sabta, there's no other Sabta. Sure, who's sure. A, an, I'm sure you did that. Uh, artist, <laughs> DJ, radio presenter, TV presenter, yeah, even yeah. outside of those talents. Yeah. But just Uchongu Sabta, Uza Ufumanamna on Google. Sure. And and we, we don't realize those changes that happen. And, and I'm so grateful to Dumel. Um, he played a massive role in my radio career coming into YFM. From a DJing perspective, there's a guy by the name of uh, Leon Sehopa mm -hmm. um, and DJ Scrib Scribble, yes, from, from the Eastern Cape. I met them in Bloemfontein. Um, they had DJ lessons. This was in 2010. Um, and I wanted to, you know, do this DJing thing. And they took me in. Um, I paid them. And they really guided me and taught me and gave me an ear and gave me an opportunity to learn how to DJ. And 10 years later, I'm still a DJ, you know. I'm so grateful to them. When it comes to TV presenting, um, Mandla at Soweto TV, sure. I was like, yo, Mfana, come through. Let me give you this opportunity. You you really have what it takes. Now I'm hosting a show, Lifestyle 011 on Soweto TV. Um, from a production perspective, Prince, K Prince KB gave me an ear. You know, from a music perspective, when we did Google it, when no one else wanted to listen, no sure. one else wanted to listen. Yeah. And I was, you know, um, releasing music, working on my craft in this production thing. And 2018, he gave me an ear and said, let's work on this song. Let's 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 release the song. And a few months later, that was one of the biggest songs in the country. So 
in all the different crafts, there was someone who gave me an ear and gave me an opportunity that I'm so grateful for, you know, uh, looking back now. And, and I want to be that for other young people, you know, whether it's in radio, whether it's in TV, whether it's in music, whatever it is, I want to be that as well for the likes of Talita, for the likes of PKMZ, OOB, yeah, yeah. T-Maxi. Yeah. And, and, and for me, it's not even about who they are because it was not about who I am at the time. It was about you talented, mm -hmm. you have the right attitude, mm -hmm. you have the work ethic, mm -hmm. let's go. Hey family, thank you so much for being loyal to Engineering Your Life. I know that if you're watching this, you're probably here for the second time or the third time. And please, if you're here for the second, third time, please may you kindly subscribe. Because if you subscribe, it helps us to get better conversation, get better guests, and get access to creating the best content that we can for you. So please don't forget to subscribe and make sure you continue watching this episode. I love that um, because... Uh, uh, you know, when we are operating in this industry that we are in, mm. um, I can't believe I'm saying that because all I did two years ago was respond to a calling, yeah. which is to use my voice and my brain and how I think and my spirituality mm. um, 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 to facilitate conversations with people like you. Sure. And right now I, I exist in an industry where we're all about my own personal brand, mm. my own be alone. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, if I'm trying to plug somebody else, it means they want to take my spot. Yeah. But here you're saying no. All these destiny helpers that came in my life in the form of people, mm. God uses people to propel you forward mm. for you to enter your next, mm. right? So I just want you to harness and emphasize the importance of understanding that if you have the right attitude, yeah. the right work ethic, you will get to your destiny helpers. Mm. And it's very important that we become those people. And it's sad that we live in that industry. I, I'm still feeling that um, at this point in my career, mm -hmm. um, where, where now, uh, when God's favor is upon me, you know, you're in season, I'm in season. Yeah. And there are people who were in season, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But are still doing well in the industry, mm -hmm. are unable to say, let's help this one who's in season, you know, let's, let's, let's work with this one that's in season. But they pretend back, ignore mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm, are not mm -hmm. there. And then when they meet you in person, it's like, yo, Fana, it's like, you're doing so, you so well, Fana, well, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but a small thing like, uh, help me push my song. Sure. Help me promote this. Help me promote that, you know? And, and when you look at, I, I paid so much attention to the, the legends, um, Oskido, uh, Black Coffee. If you look at how they moved, um, Oskido always has a young protege that's coming. Sure. And he's always. willing to assist. Yeah. And then it dims the light on him, mm -hmm. but it shines it on someone else. Mm -hmm. But it also allows him to shine. And reinvent. And reinvent. And remain relevant. In one or other way. Yeah. And, and, and I think that talks to longevity. Mm -hmm. If you are in this game for fame and the popularity and just for the moment, yes, it's a valelana. That's what it is. Kia valelana, onkum tufuna ibe, my moment. But if you are in it for a longevity, you'll see people like Kabza, Kabza the Small, who's also um, um, a true reflection of that sure. currently, sure. where your young stunners, where he features on other producers, other artists' songs, just to give them leverage. that push, yeah, yeah. that leverage. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's so important to me that every time I get an opportunity, whether it's a TV interview, a podcast, a radio interview, I mentioned these young boys, uh, PKMZ, OB, t -Mexi, that I work with, I will talk music, that I've managed to work with, um, that I think are super, super talented, but just needs a mention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for eyes, a Talita, yeah, you yeah, know, a yeah. Snetemba Cornello yeah. that just needs eyes, ears, you know? And 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 for me, it makes me feel good. I even do it on my radio show. I'm in Scott's Mapuma now. Mm -hmm. I had him last year, 2023. I have a platform where I put on uh, unknown artists, sure. you know? I had him last year and today he's the biggest thing. He'll never talk about his story and not mention hmm. either YFM or my show or hmm. me. 
and that's not what I want. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying, that makes me feel good that I yeah. gave a yeah. young yeah. guy who just needed a platform to be heard that opportunity. U Cowboy is, is also an example. He was also on the show. He's on one of the biggest songs right now. So I think we, in the industry, this mentality of it doesn't work hmm. because I want to shift anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? But they also like people who 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 have values of being able to assist one another. We grew up in a society that's like that. I don't know when can don't go industry where we're taking up this attitude and and this kind of character of I'm big now and it's my turn and I'm not going to help anyone else. I don't understand where it comes from and it's unsustainable. And generally, I'm not that kind of person. And I think for me, whatever I am in the industry, I grew up in a family where my helper at home was part of family. Sure. Where uh, Usmol, who was doing the garden, is part of family. Yes, When's a guardian? Yes, is a helper. There's those boundaries, but they're family. Correct. You know, it doesn't matter what what they are, where they stay. Treat them, respect them the same way. And if you're able to just elevate them in one or other way, be it from a recognition perspective or from a material financial perspective, why not? And I take that from how I grew up, and I would like to assume that I. It's something that I want to apply, that I am applying, you know, in the industry, even though sometimes you feel isolated. That's fine. But as long as you pick him, you know, um, for that opportunity, you know, because sometimes it's, it's literally just him seeing himself on iTunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. Or Spotify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or being on a song with you. Correct. What does it take from you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know, um, as I said, now that I'm, I'm I'm in this industry by virtue of this platform, um, I'm trained academically. Sure. I'm trained. I'm an engineer by profession. Hey, I, went through, I went through the, the schooling system. Yeah. I went through, you know, what, eight years of university in total because I graduated with my master's this year. And... You know, you are well learned, Mos. I come here to fund. It's called a necessary. Very. Which is so hard. It's funda. Funda. And so, coming from that world and and operating in the corporate space, things are structured. Yeah. Things follow principles. Things follow systems. And if you do this, this is the results. If you follow this principle, this is the results. Mm. The principle of gravity doesn't request our permission for it to exist. For example, sure. things fall down at a certain kilometers per hour because gravity just says there's a pull. The earth yeah. has a pull. And what I've noticed is that in this media space that we exist in, many people are untrained. Mm. And... The lack of principles in being untrained has caused a lot of people to operate from a place of insecurity. Mm -hmm. Hence, they want to close doors from other people. Um, they want to be celebrated alone. And when they are in season, the season is so short mm. because these principles were not harnessed yeah. when they were out of season yeah. or when they were still coming up mm. or they didn't want to uh, 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 be mentored by a, 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 a subta mm. or they didn't want to be mentored by an Oskido. Mm. They wanted to compete with Oskido. Yeah. They wanted to say, ah, I'm the next hottest thing. Yeah. Perhaps that's one of the greatest issues we have within the industry mm. is that we've got a bunch of broken, insecure people identifying with their talent mm. instead of realizing that the greater purpose is making music, yeah. changing lives. Yeah. Because your music can change lives. Mm. People being your fans doesn't mean they are a cult following that you can disrespect. No. Mm. These people are seeking something from you that God has gifted you yeah. with. You yeah. Know? And 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 in understanding that, um, and understanding my purpose as an artist, um, I I don't think I'm at the point where I can say I've I've and I mean you mentioned it, which I'm perhaps maybe peaking. Mm -hmm. um, I won't compare myself Nabo Skid or Nabo, you know, black coffees. I'm still growing in the space, and you mentioned that um, there's so many. Uh, people in the industry that do not want to learn. Uh, the learning phase is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you find someone maybe who's got a hundred thousand followers on social media mm -hmm. 
um, and because they've got those followers and they've got that um, social popularity yeah, and social yeah. capital, yeah. Um, they want to be at a YFM. They mm -hmm. want to start a podcast, but they don't understand that. Come on, you're hitting them in their studio now. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's 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 training. There's a skill. To, to doing this thing. And you are seeing it now. Mm -hmm. There's principles for that industry. There's Every principles industry has for that industry. Yeah. Um, and and um, KB once uh, posted on, on his status and said, the industry is 80% um, business and 20% talent. Hmm. And what is business? Business needs you to understand principle. Yeah. It needs you to understand that business functions in a certain way. You need to move a certain way. And in most cases, we are coming in, get talent, mm. coming in, get followers, we are coming yeah, in, get social yeah, media. Yeah, we yeah. don't want to learn. And this is what you're putting on the table. And it, it has become detrimental to our industry. It has. Because now anyone, we are again, anyone can come in and say anything. And and again, it goes back to what I always say, this podcast is be regulated to a certain extent. Convince me. Because... Because now people's lives are being ruined because Abantu are just saying anything mm -hmm. about anything mm -hmm. and there's no consequences. Mm -hmm. It's a good platform for people that, that has um, lower barriers to entry. Love that, right? You can just buy podcast equipment and get into it. But once you start growing, even like business, you understand that there's, you have a responsibility. Sure. You have a following. There are certain things that you can and cannot say. There are certain things that you have to say on effects. We are under that regulation on radio. And yes, it's got its limits. But I know there are certain things that I cannot say about you. Or if I do say them, there will be consequences. Now, we don't have that, that, that regulation. And because of that, again, without training, just say anything that you want to say and it is what it is right now because of that the credibility of the space i get you the credibility of the space i get you we lose the credibility of the space and we want to keep podcasts such as yours to bring in and have good conversations sure. and have uplifting conversations yes. and have controversial gossipy conversations but we all know what the Indonesian move is about viral. You and I have never been controversial yeah. right now yeah. in yeah. order for this yeah. conversation to go viral. But we could be talking about something important that could be uplifting a tabo, mm -hmm. a tandeka mm -hmm. from some other, you know, um, hood or a cast like. But to zoom out, Bali from Sashangu, you know. But it won't go viral. Because our manyela umto kosipa or teta ngoguti. This person cheated on this person, that and that and that and that, or this person chayes the drugs, or this person does one, two, three, and four without fact checking. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying, Guti, from that perspective, for nekibe regulated, so that we keep the credibility of not only podcasts but of just media in general, broadcasting, broadcasting in general. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's yeah. very important to to keep. Um, the 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 seriousness of your podcasting not everyone can be a broadcaster mm -hmm. it must be realistic absolutely and we know that you know but yeah yeah it is what it is so the man behind the camera here his name is tkj sure and he always says um i'm throwing punches he always says many celebrities traditional celebrities have launched podcasts in the last year or so mm. and many don't make it past episode 10 20 sure and the reason is TKJ always says, YouTube will humble them, my friend. He always says that because they don't know the principles of this medium. Sure. They think, as you're saying, so they're just as guilty as the influencers who have 100,000 followers. Mm. Just because you have 2 million followers on Instagram, you will not have 2 million views. Sure. On podcasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a medium of broadcasting. Yeah. That you need to be go back to primary school and learn mm. and say... I'm, I'm a beginner here. Yeah. It's another medium of broadcasting that I'm a beginner in. Mm. I might even have been on TV, but I'm a beginner here. Mm. And I need to follow the principle. Mm. So the principle things always comes back. And also with the regulation, um, YouTube, Spotify does actually regulate us with what we can say and what we cannot say, right? Mm. But what I find is the platforms that are so desperate for a viral moment 
will post something that is against regulation at the risk of their episode being taken down, demonetized, um, being sued and whatever. Yeah. So there is regulation. But as you're saying, people are more hungry for being viral mm. than respecting boundaries. For example, your boundary might seem stronger because you've got a monthly salary. Perhaps this person, there is no boundary that they feel because it's like, ah, I just got a microphone and a camera and sure. let's shoot it, let's go, whatever, whatever blows, blows. Mm. So there is regulation, but I think consequences moving forward need to be more stringent. And I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I'm happy that there are people who are defending their reputations and suing people who yeah. say horrible things about them on podcasts. It's necessary. It's necessary. It protects people's hard work that they've worked for yeah. because it's people's livelihoods. You can't just come here and say yeah. anything about anyone. Look, like any other medium, um, and I'm glad you mentioned Lendu TKJ, I did less because mm. You've got celebrities who moved from TV and then wanted to do radio. Same thing. But never understood that radio yes. is a totally different Absolutely. platform. Yeah. Um, and that is why you'll not see me starting my own podcast. Mm, mm, um, mm. Because I don't want to go with the sense of... The way... Oh, just because you say radio in our yeah, time yeah, and yeah. you do this so well on radio, why not do a podcast? You know you know those conversations. Ah, Antona Sapta, let's take this thing and mm -hmm. do a podcast. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not the same, right? Um, yes, we could be broadcasting. Yes, we're having the conversation. But as you say, it's a different medium. It requires training. It, it requires a different approach mm -hmm. altogether. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying, Guti, um, the industry currently lay up if you are in TV, why not do radio? Then you can to radio. If you are on radio, why not do podcasting? Do podcasting, uh, and that's why they don't survive after ten uh, episodes. Well, no, I did ten. I want you two. I want you thirty, but no one's watching. Because they don't understand the medium, they're approaching the medium with the same medium they're coming from. Yeah, right. That's crazy. Right? Anyway, <laughs> your relationship with Prince KB. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting to me because not many people know about it. Sure. Um, they subbed out there in the song credits. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think people connected that because it was in a time where Prince KB was still very much of a super celebrity then. He still is, but obviously seasons as we spoke yeah. about. Yeah. And it was all about him when Kukuleta came out. Sure. Uh, I think it was just at the start of COVID as well. So the attention wasn't there about Sapta. Yeah. Prince KB and who he is to, to you then and what he still is to you now. Yeah. He's he's more of a, a very close friend, man. He's like a brother. Wow. Um. Just to go back to the song itself um it was intentional for me not to uh, and and i understood that the spotlight is not going to be on both of us okay. or on all of us okay um but it was very strategic for me to make my mark in the industry to say i'm working with the prince kb and here's the song. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. If he's on a spotlight, yay. If it doesn't come with the spotlight, that's also fine. But from a from a resume, CV perspective, correct, profile correct. perspective, I've got one of the biggest songs with one of the biggest superstars at that moment. Correct. You know? Because I believed so much in my own craft that I understood there are certain elements that needed to come into play in order for me to get to where I want to get to. Sure. And Prince KB and I have known each other from like Bloemfontein. He was a DJ. I was a radio presenter and a DJ in Bloom, Kof CFM. Um, and we knew each other from then. And when we came to Joburg, um, and for me to start working on the music, and I hit him up. I mean, I used to send him some music. And funny enough, before we even got to the Kokuleto song, there's some music that I used to send to him and he'd say no. This because he's, he's so big on the craft. Yeah, yeah. No, this one, no, it's not worth the one. You know, this one is Bob, this one. And I, and I wanted that honesty from someone like him who had Banomoya, who had Club Controller, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who had Better Days, mm -hmm. you know, Wajelwa, and, and is one of the best producers in the country. Sure. You know? So, so even till today, you know, uh, KB and I hang out. We, I mean, it was at my birthday celebration. He, he pulled up. Um, 
he always calls me up we chat you know uh, and hopefully we'll work on another song yeah, you know yeah. but our relationship is not entirely just about the music you know it's outside of that and after that song yekukuletu it opened me up to so many other artists in the industry that primarily were not going to look into my direction if i didn't jump on the song or work with kb on kukuletu uh, I started working with uh, DJ T, Rainak Music, Lady mm -hmm. Zama, mm -hmm. you know, did a song with Amos. Mm -hmm. Now I was solidifying myself as the artist to also look out for. Sure, you sure, know? sure. And that was the, the positioning for me. It wasn't, I knew KB was big at the time. I knew KB is is the guy. Um, and he, he, made, he played a massive role in the song um, and making it what it is. Yeah, from production, from marketing, PR, a brand perspective because we don't look at those things correct when we have these music conversations it's always about who did what on the song mm, who did mm, what in mm, studio mm. but you don't realize the part outside of the production outside correct. of the studio yeah. that plays a massive role into making a song mm. um what it is and i mean after that song with kb i won uh sound city mvp best collaboration um award we won dstv song of the year award so it was really a good and great positioning for my brand and i mean after that uh, uh, as a solo artist and as a musician it took off we also did another song after that in fact with intro guys called yeah. sata yeah. um with the kb um and then that's when my solo artist career really started pushing um and another different level in the industry between club controller uh sorry between kukuleto and 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 now where we are with Kuzolunga and yeah. what it's done for your life, um, there was a quiet season. Sure, there was a season where, I'm sure, you felt like giving up a little. Mm. You felt discouraged, if not giving up. You mm. felt discouraged. You felt like, why are things not popping off for me? Like I just need this music thing to pop off. What goes on in your brain then, and how are you holding on? Mm. Sure. Um, you are peaking as a feature on a kukuleto. You start making decisions to say, okay, maybe my career is Um, You get this attention from the artists that I mentioned. You start being in studio with them. And obviously you're thinking at that point, yeah, no. I don't know, you know, and then you release the music um, and it doesn't catch. Hmm. I released Supersonic, didn't catch. Piano is peaking at that time. I'm sticking to Afro House. I'm not migrating. I'm not changing my sound. I released um, Ha Ha with Lady Zama, doesn't catch. Um, and you thinking, oh, I've got these big artists. Why is the music not catching? That really did discourage me because I, I thought this was my moment. It should be my moment. Um, some people do know me from Kukulet. Like we did a music video for Kukulet. Like you should know me. Um, I think for me, the dream kept me going. Um, the belief in myself kept me going. Um, and I mean, at that time, I didn't understand my purpose in music. And and maybe that now, when I look back in hindsight, and, and, and now that you asked this question, I'm like, I needed to discover my purpose and my positioning in the industry. You know? Um, at that time, I made the music just to make the music. Without the positioning. Without the positioning. Without, and the client is positioning. What is your place in someone's life? Go music. Mm. What, what, what is your place? You know? Is your place at the club? Is your place at home when they're cleaning? When they are driving? When they are even praying? Um, or when they're chilling? What is your place as an artist? And I hadn't discovered that. Um, radio kept me going. 
you know. Um, and for me, it was, let me keep doing radio because I love it. You know, I'm a radio presenter. But also, let me just keep releasing music, you know. So I just kept on releasing music, um, building a community, building um, a society of people who will fall in love with my craft, even though I didn't understand my positioning. A few years later now, it's Kuzolunga, and I've done Tingandaka, I've done Kulega, um, Emma Tandweni, um, Sebenza, Mpumelelo. I realized that every single time I get into studio and I jump into studio, I need to understand the messages. There's a certain type of message that mm -hmm. God brings in the studio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, I will bring in a Talita who we haven't been in the same space. I play her a beat. She just wants to write about uplifting music, mm. spiritual music, and it just connects. I'll bring in a Basitsana, send her the beat. What do you have in mind? She will bring in uplifting music, music that brings hope music that motivates, music that takes you out of a deep, dark place, mm -hmm. music that encourages you. Then I realized that that is my positioning. That is, that is who Sapta is. I can't make club bangers. I can't make street bangers, you know? Um, maybe one day, you never know, because God we has changes in. We pivot. We pivot. Yeah. A creativity I change. Mm. But at the moment, I had to understand that I'm a Kuzulunga type of guy. I'm a guy where someone listens to my music. We are jiva, but you're uplifted. Mm. You are hopeful mm -hmm. after listening to that mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. um, and in me understanding that, when I look back during those times where, I, I don't want to call it depression, but maybe Kawi Tungi Sakakhe, um, and when I think about what happened and what I used to do at the time, sleeping for long hours, uh, loss of appetite, not looking forward to anything, uh, not even thinking, considering good to my brand, I need to be here, I need to position myself in a certain, like lack of interest, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. I understand that maybe there was a certain level of depression sure, there. Sure. When you look at yeah. those When you diagnose signs. those symptoms. When you diagnose yeah. those symptoms, yeah. like, I know, maybe, yeah. you know? Um, but God takes you through those moments to teach you or allow you to find who you really are and what he wants you to be, hmm. especially in the music and radio space. Because in radio, there's probably 500,000 people, six, seven, one million people that listen to me on radio. How am I positioning myself in those people's lives? So when you look at from, from a 360 perspective, the music, the radio, and and what your purpose is, you, I've understood that the music that I make heals. The radio shows that I do heal. They uplift, they motivate. It has to have an element of hope. It has to have an element of um, ins inspiration because that's who God wants me to be in the society or in my community. I'm big on that. I'm building a community of people that follow me for the messages, that follow me because of the person that I am mm -hmm. and how the music speaks to who I am. A music is not music that I just release for the sake of releasing it. It's music that I wanted to hear. I want to hear. I wanted to hear five, six years ago, during that time when I was discouraged that young mm -hmm. I wanted to hear that. Yeah, I needed that myself. I needed that myself. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have it at the time. Yeah. That's fine. But let me make it accessible for someone else. And when every time people ask me, what were you thinking, Ngalangom? I say, I needed to hear that because I almost didn't make it. I almost didn't make, but now when I listen to that song over and over again, I'm like, yeah, this is what God wants me to be in someone else's life. Remind them, good young Indian clash. 
I was speaking at three months ago. Yeah, at at um, University of Pretoria, mm. I was invited by the station manager of Tax FM. Sure. To speak on personal branding and mm. and 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 podcasting. And I remember one of the questions from the audience members was, "Why did you start the podcast?" Um, and I, I I hadn't thought about it deeply, like mm. what the podcast has become now, but I was like. God had given me a vision because God speaks to you alone. Mm. And the vision was broadcast, broadcast with purpose. But nobody wanted to listen to my demo or they would listen to them and, and I'd be rejected. Mm. This is two years ago. And when I started the podcast and called it Engineer Your Life, I married my world of being an engineer. Mm. I married the life-giving conversations that we are creating on this podcast and purpose-driven conversations. And it is what it is today because I stuck true to my purpose. Sure. Against the current where podcasts back then yeah. were not about this. Yeah. There was no traction for doing what we're doing here. Mm. The traction was around talking about people, gossip, yes. music, news, yes. right? So I'm just drawing that parallel because you're saying here, here you're sitting, you're a cool guy. You've got black nails. You're a superstar. <laughs> you've, just, you've just got that superstar energy. But here you're dabbling into a world where people would say, no, then you should be singing gospel. Sure. You should be in church. Yeah. But you're saying... God is there for cool guys too. Sure. And if you're a cool guy like me with black nails, God yeah. loves you too. Yeah. God will fix things for you too. Yeah. Kuzulu. Yeah. Of course. Of course. We 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 have a oh we grew up in 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 a society or in a Christian society that gives you an idea of how a godly Christian should look like. Hmm. And I'm totally <laughs> the opposite of that. Yeah. Amazi Yeah, yeah. You know, um, um, I don't always go to church. Yeah. But I pray every day. Mm -hmm. But I believe that everything in my path is led and directed and guided by God. I grew up in a family mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You're connected. I've, I'm very connected. Yeah. And I think in order for us to touch lives, we can touch lives in the different places that we are in. Society has shifted. Sundays on Gum when we grew up. How about we bring God with us? Take to the him clubs? everywhere we go. Why not? And I'm not saying bombard people. Mm -hmm. Because also another thing is a lot of people repel Christianity or mm. repel Mm. In the Bagatiklo because it's 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 overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But man, be cool. How it's packaged? Packaging. The packaging. Yeah. You be cool and understand. Go to house after now we are jiva. Yeah. Us after now when some music. Us after now when some zipo dresses the way he dresses and he's cool. Mm -hmm. But he's a believer. Sure. And the tiklo now when some don wamba na. Na lo wan bitawe every Sunday. Wamba na na. Tiklo wamba na. Yeah. Now we us blomele taveni. As long as we are good to go by now. You understand? Mm. So so I remember my mom said, Mdanam di pupe uy pastas uy pasta. That my man gegged ya wanna leo pasta yo na. And now when I think back, I'm like, maybe my preaching is through what I do. Mm -hmm. I've got a voice, I've got a mic. I make the music, the messages are there. Mm -hmm. That's my form of preaching. Mm -hmm. But you preach in a cool way. Sure. You preach in your own way. Sure. You are you are doing this yeah. preaching yeah. Yeah. in your own way. Yeah. That makes sense to you. Yeah. That gives you a sense of purpose yeah. every single time. Correct. Some people might not like it. Some people will like it. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You are understanding at this moment that you are doing what God wants you to do. Correct. And and there are moments that remind you every single time. Mm -hmm. No, 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 we are moving, we are shifting up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, I sat down with Sizwa Alakine um, and, and we were in studio and there's a song called Pakamisa that we did and I was like, Mdana, I, I, I'm looking for Ingo Maestrata, man. You know, Pagamis, Bazamogos Valelanga Pan, let's say Yeah, but like I'm thinking, but even in that, there's motivation. Even in that, there's mm -hmm. uplift. Mm -hmm. But it's a street song. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. It didn't do well. It was on the same EP as Zuguzolung. Guess which song did well in the country? 
kuzolunga correct utiklo again was saying to me ndiya kuvuenza ntoni and i'll remember, let you do it i'll let you do it i always bring you back but nay yeah indlela yakho this is what this is the message that you have to say now yeah. ebantwini mm. and and it took a long time to understand that it took a long time that's why i'm saying kuti you can be whatever man utiklo ufuna nje your heart and your soul and your commitment to him that's it I've noticed on radio um maybe you don't notice or you do it intentionally you you'll let me know you speak in passing about your partner with so much endearment <laughs> um but you've also spoken about how you weren't always this this good guy sure. as a partner sure what does it mean now in this season of your career to remain rooted in your principles even in how you approach romantic relationships oh that's important um I've been with my partner for 10 years. Um and we married by the way. And I was thinking at 10 years of such hola. He umntana abantu girlfriend kwashengaka. No, we married by the way. Um and and she reminds me all the time like you know sometimes the industry can take you. Um it's a very fickle industry like it can take you over when nandi you gaining popularity you are moving you know but as soon as i get home i'm reminded that eh usengu siyabulela you know what she sicha sakho maybe not like that <laughs> but you 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 are you're grounded man yeah. you know you are grounded you yeah. are reminded to move in a certain sure. way you know sure. um and that has been one of the core important things that has made me uh, who i am in the industry you know and and i always say to even my friends guys dibuyele ndlini mna even say ti direction masiyeni le guys location i'm committed to my partner yeah and that has saved me from a lot some and and the what could have happened but being committed to that and saying i'm going back to my partner i'm going back to my wife that's exactly what i'm going to do and it saves you from a lot um i talk about my partner on radio because that's who i am she's a part of my life mm-hmm. but i also don't want to impose it on people the mm-hmm. partner i am mm-hmm. or my relationship because i also believe radio just like podcasts you need to be personal people need to know who we are connecting to so 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 you know um and i've always been big on that i'm not very shy about my personality and who i am and how you can relate or not relate to me um and i'm big on again with out man me libe nomdu you know um be committed to something um and when you are committed to something you or someone you you have a sense of responsibility whether ngumtana whether it's family whether it's sibling, whatever it is but be committed to mm-hmm, something mm-hmm. because when you don't have that certain level of commitment you you are move move nje instability instability we are move move nje now and again uza kubona ingathi izinto zakho ziyahlangana but as soon as ihlangana you again instability sure, sure. you are just scattered yeah, yeah. but when you are committed to something when you are focused on something eh, you you stay true to who you are and your values and your principles and you are reminded constantly we need that reminder you know whether ngumfazi wakho whether it's umntana wakho whether it's your mother we grew up where you can be the best soccer player kas lakho cuz i used to play soccer and i was that guy goalkeeper you know one of the best in my hood but when i come home i'm reminded of values i'm reminded of uh, my principles at home that popular siyabulela pa and how people elevate you and where people position you that you can do whatever you want and no one is going to say anything but frequently you are grounded when you go back into society you go back with those values and those principles so i apply that even now with my partner um and being committed you know to 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 that foundation and that sense of grounding that i get every single time difficultly so i do talk about her um Oh man I love her so it no. is what it is 
Um, we didn't get to talk about radio, but I, I, I'm, I'm deliberately doing this because uh, I need you back next year. Um, when you're giving us bigger music and you're, <laughs> and you're a bigger superstar. I'll be back, I'll and be back. And you're super prime time. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, um, there's a young chap out there, he's 18, he's hungry to get into the game. Sure. Or, or a young lady, because I always feel like the advice we give the chap and the lady can needs to be different a little bit because the dynamics are not the same that they face. Um, they're so eager to, to just break through in the space. Why should they hold on? They should hold on because that voice that needs to be heard by someone um, will never go away. It will constantly be there. That voice that says to you, you, you have what it takes. Hmm. You need to be saying this on radio, on TV, on a podcast, on music. It will never go away. Hmm. Those sounds, that music, those melodies, those chords, those drums, they will always, always be there. And you'll always want to release. And in that releasing, you are releasing to a someone. And that someone will be a constant reminder, even in your small pockets of friendships, community, they can hear that there's potential. They can see the light. You just need to see it. And when you see it, you'll understand that why you need to hold on. And, and the voice, like I say, the voice will constantly be there. I, I, I even do links in the car still. I've been doing radio for over 10 years. I still do links in the car to make sure what I respect and constantly work on the craft. So even in that moment when you are holding on, do not stop working on your craft. Sometimes you don't have to be on radio in order for you to express the voices of value. You can be on a podcast. You can be a commentator, a gaslak, or you can be a TV presenter. Hold on, because those voices will never go away. And you will live in regret. Hmm. Okay, you say nine to five. Yes, you are doing it to survive at this mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And I fully understand that. Yeah. But even in that nine to five, don't lose the sight and the, the eager to want to express those voices. And, and many a times, I mean, even before I started growing in the industry from a radio, TV, you know, uh, music perspective, um, I got into a nine to five and push or something, you know. But even then, the, the radio present, the personality, the brand in me, the entertainer in me would constantly show up. Uvelube ne light, man. Uvelube ne favor. In every space that you are in. Kwa kutuwa, sitwe la ke umto za u presenta o roza by host. Kuvelo kutuwa we na sisi. That's something that says to you, you must hold on. Don't take that for granted. That's the light bringing you closer to it. That's the light bringing you closer to it. That's the light bringing you closer to it. And currently, when you talk about women, gents, women are we can say in the media space, really in a good place now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of platforms that are giving women voices, you know. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, platforms that, that I mean, uh, at YFM, we've got a breakfast host who's a lady, mm -hmm. um, a drive time host who's a lady. Um, we probably have so many radio female presenters um, at, at, at Y and we're in a good place, especially for our fathers, to get that empowerment. But I also just don't want us to lose out on the boy child. Yeah. Because yeah. what are we doing with him when we are saying woman, woman only? I think we need to get to a platform and a place where it can be equal. Okay. It can be equal. Umfana, you are talented, get the opportunity. You are a woman, you are talented, get the opportunity, regardless of your gender regardless of what you can do or bring. It's the talent. Talent, my nigga, equal opportunities. Because what are we doing with the boy child if we're city 90% women? Mm -hmm. What are we doing with the girl child if we're saying 90% mm -hmm. men? Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there's inequality. There's inequality. Um, so we need to work towards a place and a, and, and a space where 
hopefully in the next few years, you know, or in the next month, in the next few weeks, where this is equal and the talent is what speaks. No gender, no race, no ethnicity, just talent. At the Engineer Your Life family, we have a specific question that we ask every single guest. And the question is, what's that one thing in life you know for sure that you're just absolutely certain about? I'm certain about. Whew. Whew. Hey, Engineer Your Life. Hey, go ahead. What's that one thing that I'm absolutely certain about? I don't think I can be certain about anything, to be honest. Because life has no guarantees. Mm -hmm. Could have said my talent. No. God can take it away anytime. I can say my life. I was in a car accident earlier on this year. And I was reminded that just like this. So the only thing that I could say I can always be certain about is my relationship with God. Because that is dependent on me. Hmm. That that's it. And and that relationship surpasses surpasses life. It, it surpasses flesh. It surpasses talent, it surpasses music, it surpasses family. Because that relationship is a relationship that even after death can still exist. Yeah. I wish I could play music on this platform, but you know we'll be copywritten because <laughs> the song that should be playing after that is that Kuzo Longa because that was the ethos of this conversation <laughs> with Sapta. Um, our very first guest who's male with black nails, but we love him <laughs> <laughs> and we continue to love and appreciate him. <laughs> I hope you like, I hope you subscribe. Um, I'll see you on the next episode. Sapta, my brother, I thank you so much. It was a privilege. It was an honor. And yes, we'll see you soon. You're family now. Thank you so much. Uh, my first podcast interview. Oh, welcome to podcasting. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, and uh, I was actually thinking about it now that the name of the podcast, the ethos of the podcast, um, for it to be my first yeah. and, and me realizing my purpose and my positioning that I was talking about, it makes sense. Um, I don't take this for granted. Um, it's it's God's positioning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't take it for granted. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, cool. Sharp. Sharp, sharp. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.